Welcome to Road Rodent Restore, I'm John. In this video I'm going to be replacing this cheap Chinese front brake master cylinder with this one, genuine Japanese, not Chinese. Uh, I did make a video of this there probably a couple of years ago. But I got a lot of slack for using Chinese brakes which is probably not the wisest thing to do but it's been okay and I must say I did delete the video because I didn't want to influence any youngsters into buying stuff like this so anyway let's get this off and let's get that on okay then so the first thing I'm going to do is remove my mirror and I believe it is a 17 mil so just undo the lock nut. I can't remember whether this is clockwise or anti-clockwise. We'll soon find out. It's anti-clockwise. Uh, yeah, might all have to be different, don't they? Okay, so I'm going to have to move the camera because I'm going to have to twist the handlebars round this way. There we go. There, there we go, just spin it on done. Ooh. Yes. Uh, I have got a name for my divvy. I'm called, I've called it Russell for obvious reasons. Because it is like uh, it is like green, so I called it Russell, Russell Sprat. Okay, so next I'm going to undo the reservoir top. So make sure you put something underneath in case you have any spillage. These are Chinese, so make sure you use a jizz, jizzy whiz jizz. one that's two and it should just lift off no a bit more carefully lift it off so you don't want to drip any drips onto your paintwork okay then as you can probably see mine is quite full of fluid and yours probably will be too so what I'm going to use is this to siphon it out like so and get a suitable container it off into it. I think one more should do it. Perhaps one more. Oh, spilling it all over the place. everything. Stick that inside there. Try and soak every last bit up. Make sure you find all the drips. Check your t-shirt out of the way just to check that there's none on the paintwork. Okay so next we want to undo this knot. Could be a 13 mil. Nope, it could be a 12 mil. Yes, so that's a 12 mil on my bike. Probably be different on yours because you probably won't have a Chinese one. 
So we'll do that on the anti-clockwise. Why do I always get bees in my shed? There's nothing in here. Nothing in here for you bees. There they can we twist that round there without dripping it all over the paintwork. Okay, so these two bolts are next and they're usually 8mm, but in my case they're Allen key. So let's go and get Allen. Oh, that bee's back. Why does that bee come, keep coming back in here? Feel it. Take that out the way. And we've got two wires on the back. Don't know if you can see them, but I'm just going to pull them off. There we go. And then we can throw that in the bin. Turn this back round again. Get our little bolts out. These do have 8mm bolts. There's a little mark on there that says up. So we want it that way. Up. If we put that there. Uh, put the first bolt in. Put the second bolt in. You probably can't see, but. I do. It's probably better that side. We could tighten in our uh, eight millimeter bolts. I don't know what's going to happen with this. It's going to tighten up and it's going to be loose. How did I know that was going to happen? I don't know what it is, it's because the bolts are too long. The bolts are way too long. Okay, bear with me while I find some smaller bolts. Okay, so I've found two Allen ones, a bit, a bit shorter. Stick that in there. Take that one out there. And stick that one in there. Yes, that's better. Baby. Bloody ripper, mate. Okay, now we can uh, hopefully put our little electric plugs back in. We can find where they went. This is a bit different because this cable went into the front like that, but now it's got to go into the side like that. It, tighten the banjo bolt all the way, obviously. Let's make sure we're not catching, we're all catching a bit there, so what's twisting down a bit. Up at that. That should do. Let's wait for the dive bomb. Right, now we can undo our cap. It's two little posi drive jizz screws. Sorry about my big fat hand in the way. Take the two screws out so you don't lose them. Carefully take the top off. And take the plastic piece off. 
Oh, and take the rubber off as well. All nice and clean in there. Let's put all that to one side. Uh, the brake fluid I'm using is Coma brake and clutch fluid dot 4 synthetic. Uh, you can use dot 5 but I don't think you'll be able to find it. It's a bit like uh, Area 51. I've never found the other 50. Cool, I'll have to get a bigger shed. Right then. Now I'm going to top that up. Just do about there. <laughs> I can't go much further, can I? It go over the bloody lip. So I'm going to leave that there for about 10 minutes or so. Go make a coffee. And then when I come back, hopefully it's felt its way down there a bit. So, be back in a bit. Okay then, so now we go down to the bleed nipple and I believe we go to the furthest caliper away from the reservoir. Uh, I have taken that bolt out there which holds the uh, securing bracket for the speedo cable because it's in the way of the brake nipple. So we just want a uh, 10mm spanner on there. Uh, that's loose and tighten. Yes, that's the right way. Uh, I've just made a long piece of pipe up. Now we just stick the end of the tube onto the top of the brake nipple making sure it's nice and secure and sealed and we have put it into a suitable container and uh, I'm just going to slacken off the brake nipple see if anything comes out of a turn. Yeah, it's starting to come up, look. Uh, we'll just check on the other camera to make sure it's not going down too far. Nope, it's still over full. So don't forget to keep checking your reservoir because if that goes too low then you're going to get even more air bubbles. So now we can uh, pump our brake lever. Undo the brake nipple. Tighten the brake nipple back up. Let go of the lever. Just keep doing that over and over again for a couple of days. Then after a while change to the other brake caliper. Right then, so nothing seems to be happening at the moment. So I've tied back my uh, brake lever. Just keep it under pressure and I'll leave it like that for half an hour and then I'll come back to it. OK, so I've been at this for a while now and now I can feel a slight difference in the brake lever but what I did, because I got fed up with pumping it and nothing's actually happening so I got a flat bladed screwdriver and very carefully just put it under the pads and uh, force the pistons in a little bit then I see all air bubbles coming out into this and now when I bleed I can feel a bit of pressure there not just floppy 
so hopefully a few more pumps and we'll be pumping okay then I'll put you on the brake lever for now you can keep giving it a few pumps under the nipple any different that was about the same just keep going with it, persevering, persevering, persevering. Yes, a few bubbles came out then. All I'm doing is alternating on the nipples, on the bleed screws. Come on, baby, you know you want to get old. <laughs> uh, uh, didn't mean to say that came out wrong. Yes, better top up the brake fluid. For the seventh time. Right then, so that's about it. Not going to get it much stronger than that. Pretty good. Well impressed. Well happy with that. Okay, right then, so now we can put our little rubber on. Plastic lid. Put a little metal lid on. Screws back in. I always put a bit of grease on these screws. Because sometimes you can never get them back out. No need to do them too tight. That's it. So now we can clean all our piper tree up, and uh, that'll be it. Job done. Okay, so there you go. End of the video. How I installed my nice Japanese brake master cylinder. And I must say, it looks very nice on there too. So ride safe and I'll see you on the next one. I see you in another life, brother.